we're going out to the garden, the nature's garden. We're going to go out there and celebrate the forageable community. There's also a larger community that includes all the plants and animals, as the Native Americans say, all our relations, and we're a part of it all. And the more we can participate and engage ourselves in the natural world, the more we realize who we really are. So let's go out there and see what we can find. Come on. Yeah, we're in a spice bush thicket. This here is spice bush. The, the scientists call it Lindera benzoin. And the mountain people, they call it spice wood. See these red berries? These berries are known as American allspice. They are just a wonderful spicy addition. There are not many spicy elements to our northern cuisine. And we use these berries. We dry them and grind them up and add them to applesauce. We sometimes make them, make them into spice cakes. Or even add them to curries and stir fries. People make tea out of the twigs. Spice bush tea is it makes a wonderful, powerfully, powerfully aromatic tea. How do you identify this plant when it doesn't have the berries on it? It's just sort of an oval, oval leaf with a little drip tip on the end of it. If you just crush one of the leaves and smell it, it's amazing. It's amazing. It has like a kind of a really powerful kind of lemony smell. You just crush it up and, well, you know you've got the plant. It's one of those things they call it organoleptics. They call it using your whole body, all your senses to identify a plant. I used to, used to have this old, this old friend of mine, old, old, old buddy of mine named Lee. And I remember one time, he had this big, fat male possum. He said, look at the hams on that one, buddy. He was gonna be good eating. And he said, now look, now what you do now, you get him all skinned and cleaned, you get you a whole bunch of little spicewood twigs, and you just, just cut those little twigs, little sharp points, and you fill him up till he looks like a little porcupine. Then you parboil him and bake him. He says, and that spicy flavor will take away the gaminess. And you know, I took that possum home and I did that. And, and now it made the possum taste so good. So next time you're cooking a possum, you'll know what to use. Good old spice bush. So these are the freshly harvested berries. So what we're doing, we just put them in this little, this little rack here. We'll put them in a warm, dry spot, maybe in our dehydrator, and they'll dry. And then once they're dried, then we can keep them all winter and, uh, and use them whenever we want them, just as, as we would any dried spice. And uh, we have a little surabachi, a little, little Japanese um, mortar and pestle. We'll crush them up. They're in the same family as, as avocados. They're in the laurel family. And they actually look like a miniature avocado, miniature red avocado. And they have a big oily seed in there, and that's where a lot of the flavor comes from. And so one of the best ways to use it is just, just sprinkle it just right on applesauce. Sometimes we actually cook it in with the applesauce. And we have a nice clean toothbrush here that we've been using to, uh, to scrape out things out of the surabachi. Sometimes we just leave it on top as a garnish. It gives a great flavor to the applesauce. Spice bush is real common um, in our area, and it grows along almost any wet woodland area. And you can find it anywhere from, from uh, maybe North Florida to Texas to the Midwest, and all the way up into New England. Whenever you want something spicy, good old American allspice, it's hard to beat it. Mmm, yeah man, applesauce with a little spice bunny. Love.